Well, I let you guys vote and it was a landslide of a win for the Aviator series by Principal Cigars. Um, so apparently I have my work cut out. This is a very large ring gauge for me. I don't do a lot of the large ring gauges. Um, this came in my August box of Luxury Cigar Club. And so I did the unboxing, as you recall, in case you missed the video, and I asked all of you watching to vote for which of the cigars that I received you guys wanted to see a review of the most. And again, um, unanimously, pretty much, it was all uh, this particular stick, probably because of Again, the size and one of the things that it mentioned in the description from Luxury Cigar Club is that this is a large ring gauge cigar for the people that don't like to smoke large ring gauge cigars. <laughs> so that's me. Um, anyways, I'm going to go ahead and just tackle this bad boy. But I did some research. I checked out his website. And as I get this lit up and start smoking, I'm actually going to read directly from the website about um, the creator of these cigars and really cool story. I usually do notes ahead of time and I kind of tend to paraphrase or just take bullet points, but I actually want to go ahead and just read his story because it's a pretty cool one. And um, that way it gives you guys a better understanding in case you're not familiar. This was not a brand that I had heard of, to be honest. Um, didn't know anything about it and really was intrigued by the design caught my eye love the band um, the band is beautiful it's that super vintage art deco reminds me of something you'd see in like great gatsby kind of a time frame um actually prior to great gatsby but so something about the the uh font and the the emblem that he uses it just i don't know screamed great gatsby to me that's just my own little feel but definitely has that art deco feel to it but beautiful looking cigar overall the wrapper itself has that nice silky uh, sheen to it it's beautiful this is a seven and a half by 60 so this is the the grand pyramid so grand pyramid and one of the things that i thought was cool is i was looking up information on his website directly the aviator series and there's um, a few different vitolas offered and yet each vitola seemed to have a slightly different blend which is cool i like that i like the whole um, not one size fits all and this one in particular has um, quite a few uh, regions of tobacco inside with the filler and so let me tell you about the breakdown it has an ecuadorian corojo wrapper which is beautiful and flawless a dominican binder and then it has dominican nicaraguan peruvian pennsylvanian and connecticut broadleaf in the filler this particular uh, bitola is actually limited to making 10 per day so he basically has his cigars made or at least this line i didn't look into all the other lines there are some other lines in his umbrella that he makes but this particular aviator series is made kind of in collaboration somewhat and now the the gentleman did blend it himself however he makes them with um or at the factory of hanky kellner jr so hanky familiar probably with hendrick kellner um he makes his cigars with him and so in the beautiful dominican republic and 10 cigars per day with a special mold for this particular cigar so i thought that was cool um he's definitely not somebody that's just throwing out a bunch of cigars and slapping a label on them he's somebody that seems to have a really um i say kind of a critical passion in the sense that like he's being very particular that the cigars that he's putting his name on that are his brand um, are made well and done correctly and so again um, this particular stick carries a heftier price point at 25 dollars. so again i'm when i do reviews of the pricier sticks anything that's over 20 bucks i'm a little more critical of how it's made um, you know the construction needs to hold up it needs to be consistent it needs to have all those good components for to me personally for it to justify a price tag like that so we'll see how it smokes this is the only cigar that i have this is um, again i don't normally do my reviews that way normally i have smoked a couple and then i'll usually do the third or fourth one as a review um, not the case here this is the very first time i'm going to smoke it so i'm going to share that experience with all of you and we're going to see how it goes and then as I mentioned, as I get into it, I'm going to read from his website to talk about the really cool story um, about you know, the, the gentleman who's making these cigars. So a little ribbon um, footband with the emblem here for principal cigars. And then it says Aviator Series on the bottom there. It kind of has a... Um, 
<laughs> this is gonna sound so bizarre. The the aroma to the wrapper has like a nutmeg and a little bit of almost like a baby powder. I know that sounds so weird and it doesn't probably sound appealing, but it's not overwhelming. It's not like a weird perfumey. It just has like a freshness to it, but it also has like a nutmeggy, sweeter component just to the aroma. So I know, I don't know why baby powder came to mind. It's kind of probably not like the most flattering description, but um, anyway, I'm just looking at this band. It's really pretty. Um, so I'm going to cut this guy here with my nice little Colibri. Look at this cutter. I love this thing. This is the lacquered hot pink. Beautiful cutter by Colibri and it has these stainless steel black blades, which are really cool. Um, I'll put a link to this in case you're interested in your, you know, for me personally, I can't have enough cutters and lighters. Um, so I'm always uh, on the hunt for, for new goods. I will say that being that it's a 60 ring gauge, it does help a little bit that it has that nice little pyramid kind of torpedo-y shape to the head of the cigar. That way you're not, you know, I'm again, not being somebody who enjoys smoking the larger ring gauges, especially, especially not a 60 plus uh, ring gauge. Um, I can appreciate that the actual pyramid head helps kind of keep that back down to almost like, I don't know, um, a little bit smaller than a Robusto size wise, you know, when you're sitting it in, in your mouth. So that, that helps. Nothing crazy is jumping out on the cold draw. And then using my little Calibri slide dual flame jet lighter. Love this guy. It actually matches my cigar, not to be a girl and everything, but I like when that happens. That's nice. That's a nice little hello. <laughs> um, so I like that. I know I've talked about this before. The first couple puffs for me, I like to talk about. I know that that's not an overall expression of the flavor of the cigar. However, I enjoy those initial notes that to me are just either, for me personally, it keeps me intrigued to want to continue smoking the cigar. Of course, um, Sometimes you may get a cigar where the first couple puffs aren't necessarily the best. And of course you should continue to smoke it and get a little bit further in before you give it, you know, an adequate um, review or an adequate tasting. But um, I just enjoy those first few puffs because as you get into it a couple, you know, inches in or so things change. And so it's nice to, I appreciate the, those first few little puffs that give you that little, um, you know, most of the time you get that nice little welcome. And so this one is giving kind of a, um, I want to say like a bread, graham, something a little bit sweet. I, I I'm getting nutmeg for some reason. It's not real strong. I got that on the aroma, but I'm getting it a little bit initially. And then again, just more of like that toasted, bread-like almost graham cracker hint of sweetness to it, but really nice. Nice aroma coming off the foot. A uh, hint of anise in the background. It's also turning, um, I, I'm picking up a little bit of a nuttiness. So I'm gonna, you know, puff on that a little bit more to see what kind of nut that develops into, but um, really nice so far. This ring gauge is so awkward for me. I'm not sure how you're supposed to hold it. <laughs> I'm so used to just, um, 
you know, certain types of atollas that when you get to the larger ones, it's like, I feel like I need to hold it with my whole hand. <laughs> it's, funny. it's funny, I guess to each his own. Some people only like the larger ring gauges and can't stand the smaller ones. So again, there's something out there for everybody. But again, I will mention that I do appreciate that the head of the cigar is tapered and that does help for somebody like myself who doesn't like the larger uh, ring gauge. Mm. And so I mentioned that the story here, rather than paraphrasing, um, I'm going to actually read directly from the website. So if you go on to Principal Cigars, which I, I'll add the link there so you guys can see also for yourself. Um, some really cool artwork. And let me read to you here. It says, growing up on Long Island, Darren Kofis, Kofis, Chofis, I think it's Chofis. Darren Chofis' early interest in history showed when he started buying, collecting, and dealing in antique clocks and books as a sophomore in high school. Uh, about a year later, he had his own antique store and would spend weekends in New York City selling at the famous Annex Antique Market. He soon got interested in historical paper and documents and before long found his first obsession, vintage cigar label art. Early in the 20th century, a perfect storm of consumer tastes, economics, and printing technology made these labels the finest color printing the world had ever seen. Recognizing their unique value, Darren sought out early tobacco artwork. Since then, he has built one of the largest antique paper archives in the world. Tracking down tobacco art and history led him quickly to his second obsession, exploration. And as a college and grad school, and as college and grad school progressed, he spent more and more time abroad. Often on extended weekends, he would hunt around Europe and the Caribbean, then race back to the East Coast for a full course load during the week. He built a ne network of cherished friendships in 50 countries, Winning and dining, sorry, I can't read today. Whining and dining, eccentric personages in exotic locales, treasure hunting for tobacco art. Darren was fated to develop a third obsession, cigars. Never one to settle for the familiar or to accept others' recommendations, Darren went to great lengths to search far enough, wide enough, and high enough to satisfy precociously culturing, his precociously cultured and demanding palate. For two decades, he tasted them all, the bizarre, the rare, the outlandish, and today, his liberty of vintage cigars spans the world and the century with examples dating back to the 1870s. Before long, an unsatisfied man accustomed to taking matters into his own hands is blending and producing his own bespoke cigars. Darren shared his labor of love first with friends and family and later with important associates. Though the secret got out, over a decade would pass before Principal Cigars was born. Darren could put his name on nothing less than excellent, and the qualities of a beautiful custom product are difficult to re reproduce in quantity. He used his experience and natural ability to source rarities to procure only the finest aged tobaccos from around the world. He would not employ shortcuts. He witnessed even quality boutique brands practicing. Finally, in 2013, Hendrik Kellner managed to convince him that even with his demanding philosophy, Darren might find a way to share his labor of love beyond his inner circle. If we have only enough of a key tobacco to produce a thousand cigars of that blend, that's all we'll make. In 2014, Darren became the biggest name in competitive cigar smoking overnight. He entered the Cigar Smoking World Championship on a lark and became the first American ever to win the global competition. That's really cool. Since then, he has broken the world record for slow smoking eight times and has also been the champion of national tournaments in USA, Switzerland, Germany, France, Serbia, Croatia, Denmark, Romania, and Sweden. By the way, side note, I've heard that that competition in Croatia in particular is pretty badass. And that was one of the things that um, it's on my bucket list to attend. I've heard all about that from like several people that for some reason the Croatia's version of this uh, smoking, what is it, slow smoking contest, champion tournament, whatever it is, is pretty amazing. So I would love to attend that. 
Um, no pretense, no shortcuts, no nonsense. After long and exceptional road, Principal Cigars is here. And then it shows his really cool logo again with that very um, Art Deco feel to it. So I thought it was a cool story. I like the whole vintage art label thing. And the cigars themselves, so really quick, the Aviator Series. Um, it says the Aviator Series is a truly artisanal range of cigars made from aged tobacco selected from private estates. This limited ongoing production from Principal Cigars is sophisticated, vibrant, and delicately balanced. Blended by Darren Chofi. I'm sorry if I'm not saying the name right. Chofi, I think. Handcrafted by a small permanent group of rollers at the Kellner Boutique Factory under the supervision of Hendrik Kellner Jr. Um, and then it goes on to show the different Batolas. And then again, this particular one here is um, only made 10 of them a day, basically. So that's really cool. That shows, um, shows, shows some dedication. So I don't know how long that was that I was just reading that, but I'm really only about half an inch or so into the cigar. So it's gonna be a long journey of smoking. And there's a, I don't know, I'm debating whether I pour something to pair with this or if I just smoke it all the way through by itself because it's the only one I have. I'm tempted to just smoke it all the way through alone so I can really taste it. Because I know if I add a bourbon or anything else, it's gonna alter you know the overall feel for the cigar. And I really wanna give it its own shot. Um, you know, alone to really taste it. So I'll probably just smoke it by itself. But um, I would, I commented that when I was doing the unboxing, this would be a great cigar to enjoy with a very nice adult beverage um, when you have just some time to sit back and relax. So um, hopefully I can get my hands on a couple more of these because so far so good, smoking really nice. Did a little tiny bit through the retro, not a lot, and picked up some black pepper, but not a sharp spice of black pepper. Again, just more of a, what you would get from a very aged type of tobacco. So just that little hint of the black pepper, um, more so the flavor. Also picking up a nice nuttiness to it now, um, more so reminding me of kind of like a peanut. So getting that creamy, a little bit salty, uh, just really nice flavor um, on the, the nuttier side of this, you know, starting off. The smoke itself is almost silky. Um, it's coming off in the palate, you know, as I'm blowing through and out, it's kind of ha has like a silkiness to it. So, um, really nice. I'm also getting a little bit of uh, a really light citrus. Um, I want to say orange peel, but it's not strong enough yet for me to really, uh, I'm trying to figure out which citrus. I can tell that there's some citrus in here. It's just really faint. Um, so I'm just trying to kind of let that come through a little bit more. So, um, yeah, so far so good. I'm going to smoke this thing down a little bit more <laughs> and, um, I'll check in about halfway through to talk about some of the different flavors that come through. All right. So coming back in with the aviator grand pyramid on the, from principal cigars. I'm about at the halfway, just maybe just shy of halfway. It's hard to tell now. I feel like I've been smoking this for a really long time. It's been about 40, I'm going to say conservatively 40 minutes um, smoking time at this point. It smokes really well. It's a slower burning, um, keeping a really nice temperature, which is something that is a perk, I think, of the larger ring gauges, especially Again, when you take your time and you smoke, uh, smoke it a little bit slower, which I've been trying to do, I have a tendency to smoke a little bit faster than I probably should. But um, I purposely, you know, re was reminding myself to just kind of slow down and take it easy. And it's been smoking really nice. The burn line is a little less than perfect. It's not a razor sharp burn line, but it's not anything that's really affecting it too much. It's not crazy wobbly or any jaggedness. It's just not razor sharp. Um, but it's not doing anything that's, you know, making it off-putting. 
The flavors are really good. Um, I'm still debating at this point, like if I saw this in a humidor, would I pay $25 for it? And I, I'm leaning towards yes, because the flavors are really, really good. Um, different, you know, there, there's a mixture of what I would call a kind of refined yet still complex flavor profile. So these different notes that I'm getting are, are somewhat faint in that they're not, you know, all in your face at once. They're just kind of coming in in these nice little nuances. Um, there's a, there's some kind of a fruity something through the retro and I don't do the retro very often. I only do it every, I don't know, a couple times each third, maybe I don't, I'm not a huge fan of doing too much of the retro. Um, you do pick up different flavors doing that, but I did notice that there was like a fruity something, but not, um, in the beginning I was kind of leaning towards a citrus, but then as I was smoking it, it was kind of maybe not not a super flavorful fruit, if that makes sense. Something along the lines of, and I keep thinking of like a pear or something, just kind of has like a, a subtle sweetness to it. Something that reminds me of a fruitiness. Um, there's a bread-like presence that was there in the beginning and it's kind of developed a little bit that it, to me, it it's reminded me of like a toasted ba uh, baguette, just like that nice hearty bread-like um, notation. Um, there's a creaminess to it. I even pick up kind of an oat, um, sweet oat, if you will. Like uh, there's just, a, there's a subtlety to these different nuances that are coming in, which are, to me, I'm picking up just different flavors that I don't normally get necessarily on um, some of the cigars that I smoke. So it's definitely standing out in regards to the overall experience of flavors or at this point anyways, um, just really nice. And I'm leaving something out and Gosh, what was the other thing I was thinking? Um, well, there's cedar for sure. I'm, I forgot to mention that. The cedar is like a, it, it's reminding me and it's com combined with the aroma of cedar. So it's kind of like the sauna, the cedar that you get, you know, you, you when you walk into a sauna and you get that burst of that cedar aroma and even a little bit of that kind of flavors meshed into it. But again, all of these different flavors, they're, they're, um, they're subtle, but they're noticeable, if that makes sense. I'm probably not doing it justice on the description, but it's really good. So I am enjoying it quite a bit. Um, I'm taking my time with it. It's not overheating. It's not, you know, it's just a really nice temperature, nice overall pace of smoking. Um, yeah, just enjoying it. <laughs> so I'm gonna sit here and keep smoking it down and check back in. Um, once I get through this last little bit and I'll check in for that last final third of it to see if there's any, any changes or, or how it's smoking at that point. So stay tuned. All right. So checking back in with the final third and, um, feeling very relaxed. I might add <laughs> it's been overall, I would say about an hour and I think like 15, 20 minutes, hour and 50, hour and 20, let's call it, uh, smoking time on this one. So it's a really good forced timeout. So definitely take your time and make sure you set aside the ample amount of time to really, if you are going to smoke this cigar to, to sit down uninterrupted and just take your time with it, smoke it slow. Um, I've had the, the luxury of smoking it slow, so I've really enjoyed it. Um, I'm kind of surprised. I mean, you, again, it's a brand that I was not familiar with, didn't know anything about it, um, did some research on it and have really enjoyed smoking it. In fact, um, as I mentioned, I was kind of on the fence with like, if I saw this in a humidor, you know, would I pay 25 bucks for it? And I'm actually leaning towards, um, yes on that. I think I would spend that again on, on this cigar. It was, it was really good. Um, I really enjoyed it and I guess I'm glad I don't have to really make that choice because it came in my luxury cigar club box. So <laughs> steal for me. Um, so those of you who also received it, if you haven't smoked it yet, um, definitely set aside that time. Love to hear the feedback. If you plan on smoking it, um, anything, any thoughts, any comments that you may have, um, you can hear Nika playing in the background. Sorry. Um, but really, really a good stick. So flavor profiles at the very end here, have kind of echoed what they were when I did my last check-in. There hasn't been any 
crazy new um, additions to flavor other than a subtle coffee note. Um, just a little bit, kind of a light, lighter little coffee in the background. Um, but really it just, all the nuances were, were very refined. They were, they were like these delicate touches of flavor, which I really enjoyed again, especially for a cigar of that, um, the size, you know, you don't want something that's overwhelming, but you do want something that's going to keep you interested. That's going to, um, not be a boring, you know, one dimensional type of, of smoking experience. This one was not that it was very, it managed to be complex without having, you know, crazy different things coming into the picture that were just very nice and balanced, a smooth overall, really good smoking experience. So again, I'm curious for those of you who have smoked this before, or if you're planning on smoking it, I'd love to read through your comments. So be sure to post them. Um, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to give me a thumbs up. And I always appreciate the new viewers. If you subscribe, I appreciate that. Um, subscribe to, I don't even know what I'm saying. I'm that relaxed. Subscribe, I think is the word that I was looking for. Um, and again, you can find this cigar as part of the luxury cigar club offering. You can jump onto their website. Um, I believe you can buy this cigar directly singular through them on their store. Um, but I'll definitely post the links in the video so you can find it easily if you're interested in trying it. And as always, I thank you so much for spending some time with me. I look forward to seeing you soon. Cheers.